Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're gonna show you how to take what we learned in the last video where we used plumber to help us with errors to prevent gulp from stopping. And we're actually going to do that same thing using gulp itself. So now we're going to be able to handle errors and keep gulp running without using any extra packages like plumber or anything. So keep watching, we're gonna get into that now. So to get started, let's go ahead and take out this plumber command. If we get rid of this plumber command in our styles task, and then go ahead and save this, let's see what happens. Uh, what's probably going to happen is when we have a mistake in our CSS, Gulp is going to crash. So let's go ahead and just completely eliminate some of this information at the end here, which would cause an error Okay, you can see it knocked us out of our gulp process. However, you can easily take care of it without an extra package like Plumber. Now, Plumber has some useful features, which you can check out on their page. However, what we're going to do is eliminate the need for Plumber just by using a simple console log to log our errors. So what we wanna do is we wanna run this command. We wanna run this directly after the thing that might cause the error. So let's say uh, in this case, we had our SAS compiling is what caused the error. So what we need to do is do dot on. And now the event that we're looking for is in single quotes going to be error. So on an error, and then we're gonna pass this a, another argument here. So you're gonna do a comma. And now what we want to say is console and we could do console error, so console dot error, and then let's do dot bind, and then inside of these parentheses we can type console, not console log, just console, just like that. Okay, so here we have our line console dot error dot bind, and then in parentheses passing it the console. Now let's go ahead and run our gulp watch again. And let's go cause some problems in our CSS and uh, looks like we are here, so let's save it. And what you can see is we do get an error. In fact, we get this syntax error uh, at line seven, okay? So it's giving us this problem about line seven. If we come back, uh, you can see that's because it didn't ever reach a semicolon here, so it got to line seven and was confused, obviously. Uh, if we put these pixels back in and save, this is going to correct the problem. So now if we come to our terminal, you'll notice that just like when we used Plumber, it's starting up and can then compiling the styles once everything has been fixed. Okay, so now that's an easy solution to just go ahead and just go ahead and just drop this in everywhere you might need. However, Maybe you don't want to type this out. Maybe you don't want to copy and paste it. Uh, another option might be to just write a function. So you could write a function up top here that just says, um, uh, error log. And inside of this function, you're gonna be getting past an error. Okay, now the internals of this function are just going to be this console.error part, so we can go ahead and eliminate all this. And now we can say, um, instead of this error right here, we can paste in the error that's being passed in. Now we'll finish this off with a semicolon, and we can finish this all with this dot emit, and then in uh, single quotes here, just end. Honestly, single or double quotes doesn't matter, I just pretty much always default to single quotes. Okay, so now that we have our error log function, let's go ahead and instead of calling console.error, we can just run our error log function. Okay, and it looks like we had an extra parenthesis here, so go ahead and get rid of that. Now, let's uh, go ahead and run gulp.watch one more time. Okay, so it's watching. Now, let's make a mistake to our CSS, save it. We get an error, error on line four. Likewise, again, it sees the error on line four because we didn't finish this off with a semicolon. We fix it, and it's up and running. So you can tell that it is, in fact, using our error log function here. And now we can just drop this 
maybe a little bit nicer line in any time that we might have an error. So let's go ahead and throw it in our JavaScript. We'll just get rid of this plumber right here. And then uh, after the uglify, we'll also paste in on error run error log. Now these are the only two texts that we have that could really have any errors. Now we can also get rid of plumber from our required variables, just like that. And let's just run gulp.watch once more to make sure that nothing is broken. Okay, um, we save this and we'll save our, our JavaScript. It looks like both of those tasks ran without any issues. So perfect, we're now no longer using Plumber to handle our errors with Gulp. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook. We always love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.